preschool. Any, any kid, any age before they get to kindergarten. Now you can imagine that there's very different developmental skills between a one-year-old, a two-year-old, a three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old, right? Each year, each day, each week is a leap forward developmentally. Do not rush academics. It's so hard, especially if you have just one or you have a whole bunch of kids and your oldest is still younger than five. They, they, they feel like, they look like they should be doing stuff, right? They should be doing school according to society. Don't rush it. Preschoolers only need, look at how small this number is, 15 minutes to 30 minutes a day of things that you would think of in terms of um, academics. And it can be as simple as singing the ABCs. A, B, C, D, right? It can be, oh, how old are you? Two, that's right, one, two, two. It's, it's simple. Remember that the journey of homeschool is from sunup to sundown to bring your kids along with you, to talk about the Lord, and to talk about everything that they're learning all day long. So if you're in the kitchen, bring the kids into the kitchen with you. Roll up their high chair or put them in the little strap-on seat and do the, the narration type talk where mom's washing the dishes. What's Johnny doing? What's Benny doing? What's fill in the blank doing? And just have conversation with your kids. With preschool in mind, your biggest, biggest success thing will be to establish a routine in your child's day all the way up actually through school, but specifically establishing it solidly when they're little. So make sure that you have, and you, you may be a schedule follower, like, but with a stopwatch, we weren't, we were more we do this first and then we do this and then we do that. So we were, we would roll through a gentle routine in our day, but the kids wake up in the morning. What do you do right after that? And then what do you do right after that? And what do you do right after that? And design your day in a way that you wake up in the morning, you have some kind of thing that happens, breakfast, and then something that happens in between breakfast and lunch, and then something that happens afternoon we designed our days as we got smarter. We designed our days so that there was a busy time and then a quieter time and then a rest time. And then it would be busy, quiet, rest, kind of that cycle in throughout the day, which meant that we had a pocket of quiet time in the morning, sometime after breakfast, um, in, right before lunch, as they were winding down, there would be a quiet time. And then in the afternoon, we had our kids rest slash nap until their fifth birthday. On their fifth birthday, they no longer would sleep in the afternoon, but they would graduate and it would turn into quiet reading time. Now I, know, I can hear you from here. My child hasn't taken a nap since they were two in the afternoon. So this is what we told our kids. Nap time, rest time is required. You don't have to sleep, but here's what you can do. You can, in our house, it was book time. So when the kids didn't think that they needed to nap, I would give them a few books that they could read or look at, and they were required to stay on their bed for a set period of time. And I made this promise every single day, especially for our youngest. I would lean in close and I would say, look, it's quiet time. And I know you're not tired. You don't have to sleep. Sometimes your body takes over. And if your body decides, you know what? I want you to sleep. I'm going to make you a promise. I'm going to set a timer so that when rest time is over, I will wake you up and you will not miss anything. Oh, did he need that? He needed that because he would stay awake out of fear that he was going to be missing out. So that's a, that's a pro tip. With your preschoolers, anybody under kindergarten. Don't worry about trying to teach them their alphabet sounds or how to write their numbers or 
how to do quadratic equations or to follow the scientific method. Instead, work on fundamental things. Play is the work of childhood. So give your children the opportunity to move through the day where sometimes you give them something to play with. Sometimes they get to choose what they're playing with. Make sure that they have access to books developmentally appropriate. Our babies always had the kind of books that they could chew on <laughs> and then they would migrate up. Um, in the morning, we would sit at the breakfast table and I would give the kids a special activity that they could do either while I was making breakfast or for after breakfast. And it was things like puzzles or Play-Doh or string beads, that kind of stuff. Stuff that I would give to them and they would play as structured playtime. And they loved it. They absolutely loved it. And then when they would play in their room or in the backyard, they had they were given time where they could make their own choices and do their own things. So the types of things that you want to focus on with preschoolers is fine motor skills, building, connecting, squishing, discovering, right? Exploring. You want to give them opportunities to walk outside barefoot in the mud splash in puddles, work with Play-Doh, squish things, make bread dough. Type You want to give them opportunities with a magnifying glass where they're just looking quietly. Oh, there's no academic thing. They're just discovering. You want to give them access to things that inspire them for creativity. So stories, a moderate amount of videos through the day. Every single household will be different. <laughs> I was outnumbered by kids and part of our routine required some quiet time in front of the TV where I would pick a show that the kids would watch together, typically before dinner time or something. <laughs> I actually brought in their car seats and I would sit them in their car seats and buckle them in so that they would sit. They were perfectly content but I knew that they weren't going to, going to go paint the bathroom with nail polish. So you may choose to have zero screen time, or you may have more than the half an hour to an hour screen time a day that we had our kids do when they were little. But figure out what that is, and then you decide what they watch. And you decide when it's over. And a pro tip for kids that are really attached to things like screen time, you can tell them that, before the movie is over, before you're going to turn the TV off, you're going to walk in and press the pause button and you're going to say, it's almost time. The TV's going to go off in two minutes. Yes, mommy. Yes, mommy. And then push play and then walk away. And that allows them to break free with dignity. So preschoolers, fine motor skills, you want to give them opportunities to develop their gross motor skills. So they need to be walking around jumping over puddles, uh, riding tricycles, uh, trying to walk toe, heel toe across things, putting a board or a string down on the ground and they need to walk on it and pretend the ground is hot lava, um, swinging on swings, at jumping through and over things, gross motor skills, big motor skills, lots of fine motor skills. Then you want to be working on age appropriate ways that they can help around the house, sorting laundry, bringing in groceries together, putting groceries away, stirring things in pots, putting the silverware in the silverware drawer, drawer, etc. So the childhood part of preschool is all about being aware of your environment, being aware of your relationships, managing your emotions, developing your motor skills, your listening skills. Um, fill in this academic time with things like silly songs, skip counting songs, nursery rhymes, um, story time, counting things, building things. And you're going to see some overlap. If the kids are playing with puzzles while you're preparing breakfast and the puzzle creates a picture and you talk about the colors in the picture, that, that covers it. That covers it. You don't have to have special school time unless you decide or you and your kids decide. So preschool, keep it super, super simple. It's all about the basics. You want to weave in 
things like colors and shapes and bigger than and smaller than, greater than, less than, but just do it naturally as life provides the opportunity. Oh, let's go collect leaves and you each grab a leaf. Which one's bigger? Yours is bigger than mom's. Wow. Which one is crunchier? I don't know. Let's go get more. And you just, you weave in those learning experiences as you work through your day. There's time for numbers and letters and writing and figuring later, but you want to get the relationships down. You want to get the motor development down and you want to get your routine down because without that gentle flow through your day or the schedule that works for you, then when you do try to fit in the academics, you will find that there's not a lot of peace. So preschool, 15 to 30 minutes tops in little baby chunks sprinkled throughout the day. And remember that most of it will not come from a workbook or curriculum. It'll just be because of what it is you're doing. Sorting laundry, colors, um, emptying the dishwasher, sorting by category, etc., etc., etc. Preschool's easy. It takes zero time out of your your brain and you don't need to spend money. You have books and things. And if you're going to buy anything, invest in books, puzzles, um, manipulatives, things that you can use for counting and sorting. Um, it's a good time to stock up, but you don't need a lot of stuff. Thrift stores are a great resource. Um, watching for things going on sale, Facebook marketplace and all those types of things. You can find organized things that you can add to your special bins that you pull out for this is what mom, this is what dad has for you to do today. And then you pull out something special like yarn and twigs and, and plastic animals and they get to do something with that or hole punches where they get to hole punch things or lacing cards or stringing beads, etc. Make sense? Preschool. It's a piece of cake.